Buonasera a tutti, bentornati sul canale. Anche stasera ho l'opportunità e penso che per il mio pubblico e per tutti voi faccia piacere. Stasera parliamo con John Withers, storico batterista dei Gentle Giant. Siccome abbiamo fatto una live con Gary Green e Derek Schulman, mi sembrava ovvio continuare il discorso Gentle Giant, dato che anche questo video ha avuto notevoli visualizzazioni. Quindi vi auguro come sempre una buona permanenza sul canale e per chi può si goda la diretta, poi sicuramente i sottotitoli ci saranno. Grazie a tutti. Hi John! Buonasera, buonasera Matteo a tutti. Thank you for, uh, for your Italian uh, language. I, I want to ask you why you speak Italian? I beg your pardon? Why you speak Italian uh, in both Why days? Speak? Yes. Because it's my favorite language. Ah, my, favorite, my favorite country, my favorite food, and my favorite language. And uh, I want to say this uh, like Derek and Gary. Gentle Giant in, in Italy, it is a huge band. And I think that the love of the Italian people for Gentle Giant is very important for oh, Gentle Giant. We always, we always love to play in Italy because, okay. the, because the audience was so warm and friendly yes. and loved us. We, it was wonderful playing, touring in Italy. So many bands like Gentle Giant, Genesis, King Crimson, and so many more... Uh, came to Italy in the 70s. But Gentle Giant, in my, in my opinion, was the, was the biggest thing for uh, 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 an Italian boy in the 70s, like my father. Because my father, it is a, a huge fan of the, for the fear, five albums uh, and later not so not so good but uh, it is a huge fan from uh, the first one to octopus uh, and maybe power and uh, and the glory so mm -hmm. it is a pleasure to talk uh, with you so john we have to do some things i want to ask you your memories about uh, your first encounter with the music uh, when uh, you were uh, uh, a baby <laughs> so. um, well, right, right back at the beginning, it okay. began. It began with uh, an Elvis Presley record. Okay. Um, I, when I was a, a very young man, um, about twelve, twelve years old, I heard an Elvis Presley record, okay. and I got. I think it was, or I forget which which tune um, it was. But I could 57, hear 57, 1957. Oh, 57, 58. Yes. And I could hear that the drummer was playing different things. And that that made me curious how how a drummer did different things with different with his hands and feet. And then I was at a dance. Um, a St. Patrick's Day dance. I was in a Catholic school okay. and, they, and they had a, a band playing with a drummer and I saw then what the drummer was doing and I, oh, that it made me so excited and um, so I, I started practicing with my mother's, do you know, knitting, knitting needles. Okay. Pot and a, a chair, just playing different things and playing along to records. Okay. And it, it came very naturally. I, I, I learned it very, very quickly and used to play along to uh, all sorts of records all the time. And it was just drums, drums, drums. And then when I was 14, I think it was, my parents agreed to. Uh, for me to have a, a a drum kit, okay, which I could only play when they were out of the house. 
<laughs> it is very it is very very funny thing because i think that uh, the drummers of your generation came from the rock and roll i th oh, think definitely. That, yeah from i think from rock and roll, yeah because uh, if sorry if uh, we think about uh, you phil collins will bruford came from this uh, situation from the rock and roll oh yeah and in certain things and in certain situation um, you develop uh, a style and i want to ask you have you studied uh, in a serious way drumming uh, or uh, you uh, learned uh, the things uh, from the records i learned everything from the record okay. i cannot i cannot read music i don't know rudiments uh i i never went to a teacher i just started playing playing music with groups okay so naturally without uh, studying no studies no because if i listen so many songs uh, when you entered in gentle giant there were so many difference in the music with change of times uh, from uh, the regular time to the odd times and i think that mr withers has studied or, or not and uh, you clear the thing uh, you play naturally when you was uh, a young boy to the real drama so you have uh, changed uh, your time from uh, rock and roll uh, and i think that uh, there was the the beat invasion from the 60s uh, to the 70s uh, and and when you enter and when you joined uh, gentle giant uh, in those days uh, are you professional musician in those days uh, or, or not well i will tell you the story okay. very very quickly um at the age of, of 15, I moved from my home in, in Wales to stay with some relatives in Liverpool. Okay. And took my drum kit with me. Okay. And at, at that time, Liverpool, the Beatles were just happening. It was 1962. Okay. And everybody was playing in a band. And I played in a band because that was it. Uh, so I used to go and watch bands in the cavern. I never saw the Beatles, but I saw a lot of Liverpool bands. And at one point, I decided to come back home to Wales. And when I got back home to Wales, a local band who were the best band in the area heard that I was, had been living in Liverpool, playing with Liverpool groups and said, can you play the Mersey beat? Which was the same thing as Ringo was playing because okay. they, they wanted to play um, pop stuff from uh, the, the groups that were Liverpoolian from Liverpool. Okay. So I tried out with them, and they were the first real band I'd been in and took me on straight away, and we played rock and roll uh, and then all kinds of uh, pop stuff. And I graduated, I graduated with them. I learned okay. to play. I learned to play rock and roll and different other things, and it just progressed from there and then i went into another band that played uh soul music and then were influenced by um the west coast music from america Buffalo. Birds, like birds like birds, like uh, birds yeah uh, doors um uh, buffalo springfield love uh, okay yeah uh, called the eyes the eyes of blue and um the Eyes of Blue finished with soul and moved on to 
what was to become progressive rock. They were one of the first progressive rock bands. Okay. Um, because it, yeah. in, in those days, uh, the transition from beat music to prog, there were few bands like uh, yours, Procolarum, and certainly the Beatles with Sgt. Pepper. Yes. The transition from the beat to the progressive rock. Yes. You was in the middle of this transition. Absolutely. And, and I want to ask you, when you join Gentle Giant, yes. can you recall the memories of your classic, uh, uh, classic, classic audition, I think that? When you came to Gentle Giant, uh, who called you? Derek, Kerry? When you um, entered the Gentle Giant, in which situation they call you or they see you on live? Okay. Well, when I was in the Eyes of Blue, um, we used to play in a uh, dance hall that the... <coughs> that um, pop bands used to come down to and play every Thursday. And we used to open the show. And Simon Dupree and the Big Sound were one of the bands that came, that we opened up for. And we got- Shunan Brothers. The Shunan Brothers. Yeah. Um, and we got very friendly with them. Okay. So years later, um, when just after they'd become Gentle Giant, uh, or 1971, I think it was, uh, I was playing with Graham Bond at that time. Graham Bond organization, yes. Yeah. I, I was playing with Graham Bond and Magic. And we were on the same bill, in the same building as Gentle Giant. And Ray and Gary and uh, Kerry, I think it was, came up to watch... Um, Graham Bond and the band okay and then I went down to watch uh, Gentle Giant they were in a different part of the building and it was all very friendly it was great to see them again uh, because we hadn't seen each other for years it was really nice uh, well about six months later I get a phone call out of the blue from Ray Shulman asking me if if I would go down to Portsmouth and have an audit play in an audition because they liked the way I played with uh, Graham Bond. So I said, yeah, great. I had just finished uh, playing with uh, the Grease Band at that time. Grease Band, yes. The, the Grease Band broke up because Henry McCulloch went to join Wings. Wings with Paul McCartney, yes. With Paul McCartney. So um, they they broke up and I, I was without a job. So I was very happy to go to Portsmouth and play the audition. And when they, we played the audition and they said, great, can you, can you move to Portsmouth and play with us? on a tour because we have a tour starting in two weeks and our drummer Malcolm, Malcolm Morton, Mortimer yes yeah yes. Malcolm has had an accident on with his the, yes, on his with the motorbike yes. yeah and broken leg hip arm I said yeah great no problem uh, they said it's a oh, it's a two-week tour with the Jimi Hendrix film. And so I went straight into rehearsals and learnt the set, the set. And, which was 40 minutes of music because we were opening the show for a Jimi Hendrix movie. Okay. Very complex music uh, because I think that, uh, in my opinion, because I am a drummer, and uh, I listened to the Gentle Giant drumming. It was for you 
a huge change. But I want to ask you, when you was in the audition, can you remember if you were alone or there was, uh, sorry, there were another drummers? No, there was only me. Ah, only you. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, it is, was easy, not so difficult. Uh, apparently, the group had their first choice was Mike Giles from King, oh, King, King, King Crimson. Yes. King Crimson. And they, they'd, phoned, they'd phoned him and he said, no, I don't want to do it. I have other things to do. Uh, so I was the second choice. Yes, second choice, but uh, in my opinion, the good one. Because well, I think that uh, you was in the right place and in the right time. Absolutely. Because I think that uh, if you don't join Gentle Giant, you was without a job. So it was, uh, it was important for you, I think that. And you join. Gentle Giant in the leg of 1971. So if I no. remember, no, it, it was 1972. Okay, so in the middle of the um, Free Friends uh, album, and you join the recording session of Octopus. Okay, before Octopus. Okay, um, okay. So when I joined, the group was promoting. Three friends. Three friends, okay. Yes. Three friends had just come out, so I had to learn all Malcolm's parts. And I think that uh, the Mortimer's part was very complex, because if you think uh, School Days on Prologue, it yeah. was a drumming, in my point of view. Malcolm Mortimer was a, a good drummer, but if I listen, Three Friends played by you, it came so naturally, and uh, for a drummer, uh, it is uh, listen the changes between two drummers. In my point of view, your drumming was so natural, because if I think uh, about another piece like Two Weeks in Spain, it is in uh, two, not three, one, two. And uh, in my point of view, your drumming, it's not so complex, uh, for uh, a little while, but uh, in my point of view, your drumming, it is very huge and it uh, fits very well with Gentle Giant. Can you remember the octopus session? Very well. Can you talk about it? Because uh, I, I think that uh, in, uh, in my opinion, talk about uh, the classical, uh, line up it is for you a pleasure so can you recall uh, the recording of uh, of octopus and i want to ask you in the precise way the recording of knots it is my best song can you recall uh yes uh yes um by then we had done an american tour uh, and I was part of the band uh, because after the after the uh, first tour in in England, um, they said we want you to join permanently. We like the way you play because I, I simplified uh, a lot of the things. You know, Malcolm is a wonderful drummer, a great yes. great drummer, but he's more jazzy than me. Um, <coughs> likes to do a lot more phrasing following the every 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 phrase whereas I would just play straight through you know in just an offbeat heavy offbeat and the the tune the tunes or whatever was happening going on on top had more space because I wasn't following the tune I was playing a, a bedrock if you understand. Yes, yes. Playing like um, so by like, the a, like a river. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so by the time we started recording uh, um, Octopus, uh, I was a very happy man because they'd asked me to stay. And 
uh, Knotts was great, really good. I mean, no problem at all. Because I'd had a lot of grounding experience with progressive music in Eyes of Blue. We'd, we'd done a lot of that kind of thing, you know, different time changes, uh, signatures, time signatures, phrasing, stuff like that. I had no problem. So when it came to knots, it was, it was just play it. Knots, for me, it was a revelation because uh, when I listened for the first time, I was 15 years old. And for me, the voices and the percussion was a revelation because in those days uh, I was studying. I was studying very, very hard drumming. And when I listened to Octopus and uh, the other ones, Free Friends, uh, including The Taste, but uh, Octopus, uh, in my point of view, was very complex. And uh, with songs uh, not so complex or progressive. As I said in the, in the conversation with Derek and Gary, the perfect love song, prog, prog love song, Think of Me with Kindness, for me, was, was the best one. And I dedicate to my wife when I, when I marry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am so romantic. And I want to say this, after Octopus, um, the progressive uh, scene was so different. And I think that in a glass house uh, were not so prog, but uh, in, a, in a certain way, like a classic hard rock. Or am I wrong? What do you think about, John? Well, I, I think it was very progressive. Um, it, it was a lot more straight than... Um, I mean, Octopus was very progressive. It, it was a, a natural progression yes. from Three Friends. But then um, uh, in a glass house, mm, well, I think everybody was making simplifying things a little. But, I mean, if, if you look at, if you listen to just the same, Yes. It's it's very complicated. There's a, a lot of complicated things on like there. On reflection, like on reflection. Yeah, on reflection, yeah. You know, which we used to play live. Yes, I saw I saw on YouTube uh, a famous concert in 1978 uh, at the BBC uh, yeah. studio. And yeah. I think that uh, the progression Come, um, came with uh, in a glass house uh, the power and the glory the power and the glory was uh, an album uh, very complex in the in my point of view not for the music uh, for the lyrics maybe yeah. maybe for the for the american people because the power and the glory tell me if i'm wrong uh, it is directly to Nixon, to the president of of the USA, I think that. Well, we I mm, it's like that. Yes, you know, yes. I, I, think I think we were lucky. I mean, it it was an idea before Nixon. the mm -hmm. the idea The idea that um, absolute power corrupts absolutely. As we have now, in like Russia. the title, yes, like the titles, like yeah. valedictory, uh, aspiration, so sincere, so sincere. It uh, it is uh, full of sarcasm, like uh, like uh, the politician, so sincere, so sincere. Yeah. Not uh, you are not sincere, and I think that uh, the power and the glory was uh, a huge uh, masterpiece. Or gentle giant like freehand like interview but the power and the glory and uh, as you know it is the uh, best-selling album now and it cost 
so so much a uh, 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 first press of uh, the power and the glory be, be, because uh, I am a collector with the inside poster of the king uh, huge huge coast and mm. I want to ask you John what is your favorite uh, album of Gentle Giant your favorite uh, I don't have a favorite okay. I, I like little pieces of all of them okay and what is your favorite song uh, I, w I want to ask you um my favorite song i think would be his last voyage okay on uh, on freehand on freehand because that really cooks that has a a feeling to it and another one that would be very close would be aspirations, aspirations. from power and, power and the glory that has an atmosphere and uh, have you listened Stephen Wilson remix? Have I? Sorry, have I missed. you? Uh, no, no, there's no problem. Uh, have, have you listened Stephen Wilson remix of uh, Gentle Giant album? The new mixes. Yeah, the new mixes. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, what do you think? Mm, I I think the new mix of Aspirations is great. Mm. Uh, Stephen Wilson is doing a wonderful, a wonderful job on on the the new mixes. A really wonderful job. And after 1975, 1976, with interview, there was 1977. The punk uh, was a huge uh, situation. And uh, the missing piece, for me, the best one, until the end. Uh, two weeks in Spain, uh, for me, is the best one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I quite, I like the missing piece. I think it's got, it's got a, the best of both. You know, we were looking for something new. You know, like, we, because punk had arrived, and all the record companies wanted a hit record uh, from all the artists. <coughs> um, so what we what we tried, I think, with the missing piece was to give a balanced album. One side is kind of prog, and the other side is kind of popular. Popular, yes, pop, pop, rough pop. Yes, 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 in my yeah. point of view. And Giant for a Day, it was the oh. natural uh, consequence of, uh, of the missing piece. No. I, I, we got lost. Lost. Okay. Musically, musically, I think we got lost at that point. Giant for a Day, I don't want to say this, but uh, you say that. Uh, uh, the direction was lost was lost yeah. like civilian civilian i don't like it so much don't you no, i think so. i think it's a great album yes in the drumming way yes but uh, the classical was uh, lost and i want to ask you uh, uh, after gentle giant what do you do after gentle giant so many people oh. do, doesn't know about and i want to say this okay Gentle Giant, but after Gentle Giant, John Withers, um, what what he do? I I joined a, a Welsh psychedelic group called Man, who had also been popular during the seventies with um, West Coast music, <clears throat> um, and I spent thirteen years with Man touring uh, Europe um, and did oh, four albums. I also did a lot of television work, uh, okay. play, playing in bands, uh, playing in a band rather, that uh, did a lot of television. I did um, theatre work. I did a lot of things and, until that... I got the illness. Okay, okay. It, it is very important uh, for a musician to 
keep on keep on rocking with with so many bands and i want to say this in the technical side of your work because i am a drummer and i am so very curious your 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 drum kit for a progressive drummer was very different from Carl Palmer or Phil Collins. Your drum, your, your drum kit was so not so big. It was uh, I, um, I, your, uh, your decision to take it so small or it was the band say to you, I don't want a huge drum kit. I didn't want a huge drum kit. <laughs> I mean, Five drums are, well, I had a set of rotor toms. So there yeah. were three, three rotor toms and three ordinary toms. I wish now I'd have had another floor tom, but I was I was quite happy with what I had. It's it's difficult enough to play. <laughs> to play but, uh, but your drum kit, uh, have you had uh, in the... Your, your your Ludwig or it is gone your drum kit it's it was just a basic Ludwig kit okay with okay. with one one uh, slingerland 12 inch tom tom okay yes multi tom tom one day i went into manny's in new york new york yes and the, i was buying heads for a tour and i was looking around and i i noticed a, a 12 inch tom tom just up on a shelf alone I, I i said to the guy oh what's that it was the same color as my ludwig kit which was only a four-piece kit sparkle champagne and and he said um he said oh it, it's just uh, an odd tom tom we have and i said well how much is it and he said oh 25 dollars I said, yeah, twenty-five dollars. Yeah, nothing. And it, uh, I just bought a stand and a case for it and took it on tour. <coughs> and I still have the the kit upstairs in my loft. <coughs> it is a vintage one. It is a vintage one. I, I I wish to play. I wish to play your kit because it is so so. The Ludwig of Ringo Starr, so so iconic, and I think that uh, the classic uh, and the uh, small drum kit for a drummer is the best one. Mm. Me, in my, my opinion, I don't want uh, any huge drum kit now. No, it, no. it is uh, it no. is not so. Why? Why? <coughs> With your symbols and so on, and. Uh, uh, outside the music, mm, what is your hobbies? Outside the music, now. Outside now? Yes. <coughs> well, I, I'm not able to do very much. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, because I am disabled. I lost the use of my legs. Okay. So um, it's my my hobby is living, living, <laughs> surviving. I'm I'm seventy six years old now. So seventy six. Uh, yeah. Same you're age. so young. You're so young now. <laughs> I wish. I I just very ha I'm very happy to get up in the morning, to to be awake and alive. But I, I like um, uh, working on the computer and write, doing a bit of writing and stuff like that. Why don't you? Why don't you write a, a book, your autobiography? I'm, I'm writing it in bits. Okay, pieces. Yeah, in pieces. Yeah. I wonder, uh, and I want to. Maybe in the future, his book came out, and I want to to read it because I think that uh, your life uh, it is a, a, a classical big thing. You were 
he was sorry a drummer in a wonderful band for me gentle giant like yes king crimson and genesis and so on and when i said this uh, to derek and gary gentle giant uh, was very different from uh, from everything mm -hmm. and i want to ask you sometimes you you have a little chat with gary derek Kerry, or not yes i mean we are in touch constantly okay because i think that uh, for a uh, for a musician to talk with uh, your uh, mates are very important uh well yes we, we we're still in business together in business yeah. okay yeah yeah <laughs> because yeah. Yes. Gen Giant still sells records. Yes. We all have to make uh, decisions. And uh, we, we speak on a regular basis. Um, I, I speak a lot with, with Kerry. Kerry. Kerry, yes. <clears throat> Kerry, I wonder if uh, he wants to do it, but I think that uh, it is very private man or, or not. Very, very private man. But like he, Ray Schumann, like Ray oh, Schumann. Yeah, Ray, Ray too. He's very, very busy and he's very private too. But uh, I've interviewed you, Derek and Gary, and for me, it is enough. And uh, this interview I will send uh, to Gary because Gary said to me, Matteo, when you will do the conversation with John, please send me the link. So I want to send uh, tonight to Gary. Well, I, I've seen your um, interview with Gary and Derek. Marvelous. Loved it. Thank you. Thank you. It, Thank you. It was great. I really, I really enjoy seeing the other guys being interviewed um, because we all have stories to tell, you know, we were and together. I think that, uh, and I think that uh, my channel was born to do this because <laughs> if you see if you see the beginnings of my channel, mm -hmm. there were three videos with my best friend, who is, a, who is a musician, and said to me, why don't you do so many interviews with, in my point of view, Italian mm -hmm. musicians, but uh, I want to do with the people of Prague people, not only Italian people abroad american and my in my point of view english uh, pro rock was my faith right and it but, is important but what about the italian pro rock bands uh, john john oh. italian pro band john italian pro band pfm Premiata for me yeah. oh great and uh, there were uh, Le Orme, it was, a, it was a huge band in Italy, Italian prog band, Arti e Mestieri, Banco del Mutuo Soccorso, BMS. Fantastic. They, they uh, opened, a, a, they were on tour with us, a long tour. 1975. And, yeah, and we got on wonderfully with them. They were a, a great bunch of guys. The really. singer, uh, oh. dead, was dead. No! Yes, Francesco Di Giacomo, dead, oh. dead uh, seven years ago in a car accident. Oh, I'm so... car accident? Yes, car accident. He, he oh. was returned uh, from the city to his uh, home and, um, and, uh, and a huge uh, tear goes to his car. Oh. Francesco Di Giacomo was a great man, big man, oh. because he, he, it is, but in the latter days was very thin with the bird. And uh, Francesco Di Giacomo was a great loss for the progressive uh, mm. Italian music. But uh, if you want to see, there was a conversation with Gianni Nocenzi. <coughs> he, he was the second uh, keyboardist of uh, EMS. Mm. So if you want to see my channel, for me, it's a pleasure. Mm. 
Mm. I'm very, very sorry about that. He was a, mm. he was a lovely man, as yes, well as yes. being a great singer. Which voice, uh, like an opera, like a classical music. Yeah, yeah. He, he no, was I, a great one. I got on very well on the tour. We were very friendly with him, uh, with Banco. Banco, they... Banco, Banco was the was the abbreviation of uh, their name because in the 80s, but from the 1975 when they came to Manticore Records with Greg Lake, Banco, Banco. Mm -hmm. John, thank you for your time. Oh. Thank you for everything. For me, it is a pleasure to talk with a legend like you. So thank you. <laughs> I'm not a legend. Um, no, yeah. you are. You are a legend with Gentle Giant. And uh, I ho <clears throat> hope so many people see this uh, streaming live. And uh, I want to say this because I have uh, near a chat and there is uh, a man who said, Civilian uh, is so underrated classical album. Well, it's... And it's an album of its time. Yes, the eighties. We mm. moved. We moved along with the times, I think, and civilian was. That was the music that was about to become popular. Popular, popular. Yes. I, I, I think that we were we were ahead of the game there. I mean, I. It's one of the best drum sounds. I ever got. Was and uh, in those days, uh, the drum kit was uh, the Yamaha, not the Ludwig. Yes, uh, we recorded in Los Angeles, and I borrowed a kit from Yamaha to to play on on that on that album. I want to to listen civilian because uh, maybe I don't listen uh, very carefully, and I want to re-listen. So, yeah. John, thank you for everything. Thank oh, you for your time and your passion. It's a pleasure. And if I come uh, to to your city in Wales, I will come to to see you. Oh, please do. Can I <laughs> can I just say before we go, in case I've got some very good friends in Italy, and I just okay. like to say hello, um, yes. just to a couple of people. In case yes. they're watching, do it, do it. Gigi Bresciani from Bergamo, uh, Bergamo. Ser Sergio Ponti, mm -hmm. a very good friend of mine, and uh, oh, uh, Andrea Bandi, um, okay. who's involved with the Italians. Do you know ah. the, I the Italian movement? Gitrotal, Gitrotal, yeah. Uh, Andrea Bandi and his his lovely wife Paola and his daughter Ada, and that's it. And uh, you you say Bergamo. I am in the middle of uh, Bergamo. My city is called Palazzolo Sulloio, and I live on the edge of Bergamo. Well, do you, do you know Gigi Bresciani? No, I don't. Uh, I don't know him. Oh, he, he's a promoter. Ah, uh, he's uh, okay. Okay, he's a promoter. A very good friend of mine. But I hope he's well. I hope all of my Italian friends are well. Like me now, like me, Matteo. Thank like you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Anyway, it's it's been a real pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. Thank for, you. Thank, thank you, for you, John. Interviewing me. Bye. And uh, we'll Ciao. be in touch. Ciao, John. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.